so excited to get to talk to you today. Thank you so much for joining us. And, and um, I would love to hear about your story and kind of what started all of this. I would love for you to just kind of take us back to the beginning and, and how all of this happened. Yeah, definitely. Many people kind of assume that there was some sort of circumstance that happened like at school when I was working, you know, with my students. And it wasn't that. Um, one day, I noticed some pretty awful comments I was receiving on my Instagram on several posts there and they came off very childish. And I was just like, what in the world? And then when I started clicking on the profiles that were leaving me comments, I recognized their faces and they were students at my high school. And so I immediately just started blocking and deleting them. You know, they have no business on my page and I didn't want them there. I didn't want to, you know, risk my job in any way by maybe communicating back with them and just block delete. Well, at one point after I had deleted and blocked a comment, that same person came back on and said, too late, we've sent this into the school district. And I was just like, okay, um, well, I guess we'll see what happens from, from here. And then the very next day I was essentially pulled out of my classroom by a principal and she walked me up to the office and I was just like, what, what's happening? What is this about? And she wouldn't say anything and walked me into a room with the assistant superintendent of the school district. And he let me know something's been brought to our attention via your social media and we need to place you on paid administrative leave. Of course, I already kind of knew because I was receiving those comments and I was just like, okay. And um, he said, you need to leave now for your safety. And that was probably the part of that, that first initial, you know, start of this whole thing that kind of made me uneasy. Like what did these students say to the school district, you know, for him to say that to me and mind you, he knew me, he knows me very well. I've worked for the district for six years. I was a student there. I was a substitute teacher there, had a great rapport and even relationship with him. And so he was repeatedly telling me, I'm sorry, Jessica, I'm sorry, Jessica. So I leave and um, I just wait. It was actually two days before summer break. So we were all kind of already in the mindset of summer. And so summer came and, you know, I it really wasn't like too stressed or worried because I figured, you know, they're going to let this blow over. Students found really my my beliefs, my opinions, my Christian conservative views, and they're not in alignment with them. And so it upset them. And, you know, I really assumed district's going to let this blow over. I'll be back and good to go the new school year, August. So then comes July, late July, and I haven't heard anything. So I reach out to the school district and I was just like, Hey, like, am I good to start the new school year? I haven't heard anything. And they said, no, we've been investigating. Like we said we would, and we need you to come in for a second meeting. And I was like, Oh, okay. And so I come into that, I have two um, union representatives with me and um, you know, we were all kind of walking in like, Maybe they'll like do a, a small little like write up, like it's not going to be a big deal type thing. And um, it was actually interesting. Even my union rep specifically said like they looked at each other and they were like, they're not going to 45 day her. And I, I didn't know what that meant. I was just like, okay. And I walk in and um, they set 13 or 12 allegations in front of me. And I just, I can't even explain like how I felt in that moment, like, I thought I was going to fall out of my chair. It's, it, it's bizarre to think of one allegation being made against me. I, people would describe me as like a rule follower, which is kind of funny now, but anyways, I guess I've kind of not followed the rules, but mm -hmm. like, you know, growing up, like I've been like to the book rule follower, like a good girl, straight A student, that kind of thing, you know? And so this is like, freaking me out that there's allegations made against me, you know, and all that I know is that students have found my social media. So I'm so confused and I start reading through them and I kind of get a sense of peace because I realized exactly what's happened. They, they found my views and my beliefs and they used them to craft allegations about how I do my job. And some of them are very like out there and bizarre. One of them was that I broadcast sermons to my classes because they found, you know, my very strong belief in, in the Lord. They actually specifically went to my Jesus highlight and screenshot a bunch of quotes and Bible verses and sent them into the district. And like the district presented me with those. And I'm just like, wow. wow. 
I'm so lost. Why are you showing me a Bible verse? I've posted as if there's something wrong with it. Right. Just crazy. And so anyways, I respond to all of these allegations that have been made. And, um, from there the meeting ends and they, you know, let me know, we're going to basically decide what to do next. And, um, so I go off on leave again. That was the first like official meeting at the school district with their attorney and my union reps. So then they call me back in, in September of last year for the second meeting where they've decided. And right away, they let me know what you've done is so serious. You're lucky we're letting you come back to work. Like they, they just let me know that right away. And so I'm already like immediately in the meeting feeling like, Oh, great. Like that really makes me want to come back. Like it's seeing just their, their view of me just totally flipped Mm -hmm. because again, some students found my views and beliefs that they don't agree with and let the district know it made them feel some sort of way. And the district just immediately, you know, jumps in and sides with the students. And it's like, it doesn't matter how, you know, what I believe and how I feel and, and so forth. So, um, at that second meeting is when they write me up for misconduct. And, um, so misconduct for what I have posted on my personal page, again, that student sought after. And then one of the allegations was that I was not calling students by their preferred gender or pronoun, which I had let the district know. I never had a student come to me asking that. So I'm not sure how that allegation is fair um, because I was never put in that situation, but a student made a claim that I wasn't doing that again, because they found on my page that I don't believe in that stuff, especially for children. And I don't believe in affirming the lies and confusion, you know, that I believe is from the devil, you know, after a child. And, um, So again, the students were really like crafty in the claims they made and and using the beliefs of mine they found out about. And um, so I was written up for misconduct, told I was lucky to still have my job. And then they said, we're sending you back under a 45 day watch. So essentially 45 days where I'm watched closer than normal um, for change of behavior. Another thing that really confused me because I'm like, I have no behavior to change as a teacher. You know, I'm, I'm going to be the same teacher I've always been. And so I'm lost there. And then they present me with their plan of assistance and directives. And that's where like the red flags really went up. And there was just like a turning in my soul. And I was just like, okay, Lord, what's happening? So I, the directives that I was being placed under Um, there were, there were about seven of them and there were three of them that I was like, nope, no way. So the first one was that I had to refer to students by their preferred gender pronoun. The second one was that I had to withhold that from parents. So if I ever had a student come to me, you know, with a new pronoun preference or like name change, that's an obvious, like, you know, changing from say a boy name to a girl name or, you know, wanting to say, enter a different facility than they should be entering. Like I have to withhold all of that from parents. And that one really stopped me in my tracks. I looked them in the eyes and I was like, are you asking me to lie to parents? And they said, yes, it's the law and it's for student privacy. And I was just like, I can't believe this. Wow. And um, the third one in that second meeting was that I had to refrain from speaking to students about God or the Bible. So that was another allegation was that I do that. Again, I let the district know, yeah, when students come to me with a question, I give them the answer from an educational standpoint. I know my line. I know that I cannot be coercive or persuasive, but I, you know, students are pretty smart and they can gauge kind of who you are and what you believe. And so I have had a lot of students feel comfortable coming to me asking what Bible verse do you have memorized, Miss Tapia? What church do you go to? You know, what what worship song is that that's coming from your phone? I love that one. Like just real casual. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I let them know that, but they were they were saying from here on out, no more. Even if they come to you, you cannot talk to them about God or the Bible. Wow. And so that one really did not sit well with me either. That meeting wrapped up. They were wanting me to come back to work like that next Monday. 
And I was in such turmoil. Um, there's actually a video on my Instagram where I'm like, I'm bawling in the car. And I think many people assume that was my reaction to being fired. That was actually um, several months before I was fired. That was after this meeting where I learned that I was under directives that essentially were completely against my faith. And that was when it really hit me that I had to choose. Do I continue to be a teacher or do I, you know, remain strong in the Lord and in my faith? Mm -hmm. And so, um, I went off on stress leave for three months trying to figure out what do I do next? You know, I sought counsel and prayed and really weighed my options. Mm -hmm. I felt like I pretty much had three to three, three options, three choices. So one would be to really unfortunately do what many are doing and just put my head in the sand, follow their directives to save my job. Mm -hmm. Um, Two would be to just resign, walk away, which something my pastor said, um, actually, when I did a podcast with him is he said that would have been quitting. Um, so I'm glad I didn't do that. Cause I was really, really thinking about it. And then the third one was going to be just speak up and say, Hey, these, this isn't cool. You know, these directives are not in line with my beliefs, you know, what can we do about it? So at the end of my stress leave, so this is now end of December of last year, I, um, had half a resignation letter written. I could not seem to finish it. I was really worked up. I knew it was time to get it sent off and just be done. And, um, I remember my mother-in-law actually saying like, just don't worry. There's a reason you haven't been able to finish it. Just pray, trust. And then I got like a divine appointment of a phone call with a couple, um, in Washington that were actually, they're very strong believers. They were starting their own kind of, um, like Christian law group that represents, um, you know, Christians in situations like I'm in. And so they wanted to just see how they could help in any way. And it was a two hour phone call. I felt just like the presence of the Holy spirit in the whole conversation. And they, really, I felt give, gave me the answer that I was praying hard for, which was don't resign, you know, see this through. And it was really incredible. The husband, he's, he was like, Jessica, I don't even know what you look like, you know, cause I connected with his wife on Instagram. He's like, but as you're talking and you're telling me your story, I'm, I'm literally picturing a woman on a stage, like sharing this story with thousands, like, this is going to be your story. This is going to be what God is going to use and just blow your mind with the people that he can touch with it. And I'm just sitting here like in disbelief, like I can't imagine this. And, and now I'm just like, Whoa, it's kind of like happening to fruition. Yeah. And he was actually not the first person to tell me that either one of my old principals, when I um, taught at the middle school had said the same thing I had, she was one of the first people I called. We were really close because we're both believers. And I I thought she was going to be really upset and worked up like I was. And she had so much peace. And she just said, that's okay, Jess, God's about to use you to reach way more than you were reaching at, you know, in the school. And I was just like, what? (laughs) Yeah. So, um, yes. So I went ahead and I just emailed my school district and I said, I'm ready to come back to work. You know, my stress leaves over. I'm, I'm doing okay. Now I do just need to let you know, um, there, there are three directives I cannot comply with. They're against my beliefs. And so I listed those out, explained exactly why. And they responded and said, it sounds like you're asking for a religious accommodation. So we're going to have to have you come in and have an interactive meeting to see if and how we can accommodate your religious beliefs. So I was like, okay. And so I went in for that. We're now in January of this year. This happened mid January. And the district's attorney had like three pages of questions for me all about my faith and how I would handle potential situations. Um, where do you go to church? What do you read? How often do you do that? What is it about your faith that says you can't lie to parents? What is it about your faith that says you can't call students by their preferred gender pronoun? Just wow. It was intense. It was one of the most like intense things I've been through and definitely felt like the questions were really trying to get me to, you know, bend on my answers or change my answers and really just had to like hold firm to the answers I had already given them, which was no, these these are wrong and I won't do them, you know, under no circumstance. And so 
that was a rough meeting. And at the end of it, they said, is there anything else we need to know about that your faith won't allow you to do in your position? Uh, and I don't, I don't think we've talked about this. I specifically was a high school PE teacher. So um, I let them know, well, I'm in a unique position. I oversee the, the female locker room. So I'll let you know now I won't be letting a biological male into the female locker room. And they said, well, we have a whole other issue then, because if that individual says they're female and you know, is pretty much presenting like they're transitioning, you need to let them in. That would be discrimination if you don't. Yeah. I'm not kidding you. There were, um, I just posted about this yesterday. There were two other males in the room in that meeting. And I looked over at them and they both sat back in their chair and put their heads down because they have daughters in school. And that was just like a major, major, like final really red flag for me. Um, and so I was like, okay, this is, this is really, this is really happening. And so that meeting wrapped up, they said, if you think of any accommodation ideas, you can email them to us, but we're going to be making a decision as to whether we can accommodate you in the next few days. And so I, I emailed in a few accommodation ideas. You know, I really wanted to keep my job. My salary really is what sustained my family. Um, and I even mentioned an accommodation I, I wouldn't have ideally loved, but I mentioned like, I'll work at the district office where I'm not around students. If you so badly don't want someone like me with my beliefs around students, you know, and, um, they, a week later, they essentially emailed me my termination packet in it. They broke down why none of my accommodation ideas would work and how they are basically following laws and ed codes by not accommodating me because they have to follow those rather than essentially accommodate me because then they'd be breaking those. And anyways, at the very end of the letter, it says we cannot accommodate your religious beliefs. Therefore, we're releasing you from employment official January 31st of this year. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So in that moment, had you already made peace with the idea or in that moment that you received that, was there a sense of relief? Was there, what was your feeling in that moment where you got that notice? Yeah, no, that's, actually exactly what you just what you just said it was really I mean not what someone would typically maybe go through or think of but it there was kind of a sense of peace I felt it I really felt it coming um actually a week before I received the email I remember just like standing in my driveway and praying a prayer where I just I kind of just told God like God if that's what's to come for me like being fired over this, I let him know, not that I need to let him know anything, but I said, I'll take this story as far and wide as you want it to go. And I'm by no means, you know, like a public speaker. Actually, a lot of people would typically call me more on like the shy and quiet side. So this is like bizarre, but this is exactly what God does. It's so funny. I'm, I've always been a straight A student. The one class in college I got a B in and it bothered me so badly was public speaking. <laughs> and I just, you know, like God has a sense of humor. He without does. it. And, you know, another thing I was telling someone at church the other day, I was like, you know, as a PE teacher, I used to wear like comfy workout clothes yeah. to school, you know, tennis shoes and a hat and like was making buku bucks. And then now <laughs> I'm making nothing, but I'm like wearing heels and blazers <laughs> and like going to events. And I'm like, yeah, you're funny, God. <laughs> like, I know. Yeah. I love his sense of humor. And I have to tell you, I've seen you on multiple interviews. You're super articulate. I never would have thought you got to be in that class. So Thank have you. confidence in that because you come across. I'm trying beautifully. Yes. Um, so I would love to just hear about your faith during that three month period. And what that was like for you and how maybe the, the lessons that God was teaching you or what it was that you came out of that three month period with a better understanding of than you started that with. I would say the, the first big thing was patience because 
I knew in that moment, right. Um, at that final meeting or not, I'm sorry, not the final meeting, the second meeting when I was given the directives and they were calling me back to work. Um, I just, I felt so many emotions. I knew I was really like emotionally unstable. I was in turmoil. I was learning for the first time that as a teacher, as a public school teacher, I'm under directives that I wasn't even aware I was under. And now I'm aware of them. Now I see that they contradict my beliefs. I had so many like emotions and, um, I knew I needed to take time and that's hard, you know, and, but in my past. And, you know, I actually just, I turned 30 last year. And so there were lots of times in my twenties where I was impatient and I learned the lesson of being impatient, you know, and I, so I'm like, okay, I'm not going to be impatient and make a decision, you know, essentially out of emotion in this, you know, so I was really grateful that I had the option to go off on stress leave. And, um, So patience was, was the first big thing and really seeing how important it was to be patient and really, um, you know, seek God and his direction for what was next, not my own human understanding, right? Because I'm thinking like my job and my salary has literally supported my family for the last almost seven years. It would be like, again, my human thinking was why would you ever put that on the line? You're going to just put your family on the line. You're going to, you know, lose your house and not be able to feed your kids. You know, that was like that human thinking, but something kept, you know, kind of pushing me out of that and just, you know, um, letting me know and reminding me like, this is where faith comes into play though. This is where, this is where we are set apart from the wor- the rest of the world is we have faith, which is the hope in, in which we cannot see. And so, yeah, you can't see how you're gonna, you know, provide for your family, how you and your husband are going to make this work when you lose a $90,000 salary, but God, yes. you know, like, and so it was just, oh my gosh, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Probably number one experience I've gone through to like grow my faith. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't, it's, it's like you said, the faith has the opportunity for the, that's where the rubber meets the road, right? With your provision, mm-hmm. with the job security and all of those things, yeah. and we get to the opportunity to rely on God and look how he's come through. So I want to hear about how God has moved since all of this has happened. So many ways. I don't even know where I could begin. I, I tell my husband all the time. I'm like, I feel like it's every other day God shows up in just like a really new cool way, whether it's literally like getting a phone call from a stranger or not a stranger, but like someone. So I signed up for a gym pass. Um, cause I had to let go of my other one. Cause it was crazy expensive. When I signed up, um, the, the, the gal who signed me up, she was like, Oh my gosh, my dad's a teacher. And he's like, kind of low key fighting what you're fighting. And so we connected, she was like, I'm sorry, I got to call my dad. And she like called him. We ended up on the phone together and he was like, I want to pay your your gym pass. And I was like, wow. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Wow. So that, I mean, there's just so many things. That was one of them. Um, he actually called me again a few weeks ago and was like a friend of mine. Um, just paid for two massages for you and your husband, like go enjoy them, just give massage and be your name and go enjoy them. Um, and then my best friend set up a give, send, go for me. And so that's really honestly for the past three months, how we've paid our mortgage just from donations and supporters. And so a really, really cool story is last month, um, I paid my mortgage and it was pretty much the rest of what was in my give, send, go. So at that point, I had no idea how we were paying this month's mortgage. And we do have like an extra car. Um, we actually have a few cows. So we're, we're like, okay, we're going to sell a cow, or sell a car. Um, but like, we really weren't, we didn't have a moment to get any of that going, but I just prayed. I was like, okay, God, like, I'm so grateful to pay this month, but I'm already, you know, having to look forward to the next month. Don't know how it will be paid. You know, I'm just praying that. So I have a little um, side business that I do. And I just prayed that 
which I'd never had a check that big, but I prayed, let it just be big enough to cover my mortgage. And I, I had faith because I'm like, okay, God's proven himself so much at this point. Like he's going to totally make this check what it needs to be. And before, I mean, weeks before it was even time to receive that check, I received a donation on my give, send, go. And one day my mom was like, Jess, Jess, have you checked your give, send, go? And I'm like, no, why? And she put $8,000 and I was like, oh, I know like it's reached that amount. She's like, no, it's reached $17,000. Someone just donated. And I'm like, what? And I go and I check anonymous donor donated $8,000. And then and I just want to like bring it full, full circle. So that, that hit. And then we had filed for our taxes. I was really not hopeful about what we were going to get back, but we found out we were getting back essentially two mortgage payments worth of a tax return. And then, and then the donation was a little more than two mortgage payments. So now we're at like four mortgage payments and I'm just like, holy moly. And then, um, I had applied to my mortgage company for any sort of assistance, you know, letting them know I lost my job. And just a few days ago, so when I made that, that post, um, just a few days ago, heard back from them and they let us know, um, for the next three months, we can assist you by, um, letting you just have a $25 mortgage. So then that's like essentially three more mortgages. So I was like, literally, as I made that post, which it was so cool, it, it really people read my story and the, this miracle, um, which is what I want people to see and hear and know is just the miracle that that God can do when you step out in faith. Um, but as I was typing that post out, I did the math. And I was like, oh my gosh, I prayed for one mortgage and he gave me seven. That's incredible. That is, I mean, that's him, that that's incredible. Yeah, I, I absolutely love it. And what a, what an incredible um, testimony, you know, just to be able to encourage others who, I mean, I would imagine there's so many teachers that are in the same spot, you know, and maybe they don't know they're under these directives. Is this a, is this your district only was under those directives or is that a statewide um, initiative for the state of California. Yeah, it's California ed codes. Wow. But you know what? I, there, a lot of them are up for kind of interpretation mm -hmm. by your school board, which is really important why parents should, you know, get really active and vocal at their school boards because, you know, they essentially need to be the ones telling these school board members what they do and don't want, you know, for their kids in, in the school setting and so forth. Um, I know, for example, um, Chino Hills, which is where they area I go to church in, but that district, you know, so our pastor called everyone to, you know, attend this school board meeting and really push this new bill called AB 1314, um, you know, onto the school board, and make them vote to put it in place. And AB 1314 is parental notification bill, which kind of would override what's currently in place, which is don't tell parents. This bill now says if, if school personnel finds out, you have to tell parents in three days, within three days of finding out about any sort of, you know, gender or pronoun preference of a student. And so um, that bill hasn't like been like passed by legislation or anything. Actually, we've really struggled to even get it heard, which is unfortunate. But what you can still do with it, because it is a bill, is you can, like they did, take it to the school board, take it to your school district and say, vote on this. We we the people want this put in place in this district. And so they did that um, for Chino Hills Unified and they, they voted it into place. So like, it's really interesting how it works. Um, you know, so that one district now, I would assume, you know, teachers won't get in trouble like I did mm -hmm. um, for sharing with parents the truth about their students. So, right. So tell me about the lawsuit. What is your goal here in suing the district? Do you want to get back in the classroom? Are you trying, what are you trying to recover? And <clears throat> excuse me, where is everything in that process? Really the biggest thing for me is I'm just thinking if they did this to me, they can do this to anyone. And what is, what is the world going to look like? What is the education system going to look like if 
all Christian teachers and really just teachers of morale. You can be Muslim or Catholic or whatever it may be, maybe not even follow a religion, but just simply believe that parents shouldn't be lied to and the opposite sex shouldn't be allowed in, you know, a changing facility. And, um, if all of those teachers are just purged from the system, what, what's going to be left. And so really my fight is, you know, I get worried for people to think like, it's just a financial thing. Cause it's really not like, I, I want to change laws, (laughs) you know, I want laws changed. I want to set a precedence in this nation and maybe even the world of like, you can't do this. This is not okay. You know, we have, there is a truth. There is the truth. And we have, you know, a moral foundation. This country was founded on that we need to stay, stay on and stick to. And, um, you know, so I'm really, I'm fighting for that and fighting for students and and teachers and parental rights. Um, so we'll see. I have, I have no idea how it's going to go. We just filed and essentially now we're waiting to hear back from the school district. Um, you know, they've been, they've been served with it. And so I have no idea. I'm really trying to just already let myself know, remind myself, um, that, and, and a couple people have told me this and I just, I love it so much. And they say, you've already won Mm -hmm. justice would be great too. And so that has just been like, so, so beautiful to just like, think on and dwell in because it's true. We win the second we choose God because he's already won the whole justice thing. The truth of that is sometimes we will, we will receive justice in this life, but sometimes we won't. And actually post about this the other day as well is the cool thing about justice though, is we know no matter what God's going to bring it when he comes again. Right. And judges the world. So you know, I'm, I'm just reminding myself, like the battle's already been won. We're seeking justice too, so that we can protect students and we can protect teachers of morale and faith, and we can protect parental rights. We'll, we'll see where it goes. I'm, I'm absolutely. Well, I want to tell you, first of all, from, you know, from Brave's perspective, we are so encouraged by you and thank you so much. And there were so many comments on the post that we shared with our followers about your story, just wanting to thank you and being for being brave and for standing up for the truth. Um, you know, and this morning when I was thinking about us talking, you know, Romans 8 31 came to mind, you know, if God is for you, who can be against you? And that is the truth of your situation. And you have you have already won, but, but doing what you're doing for the good of the rest of the people to be able to Christian teachers continue doing what they're doing in schools, you know? Um, and I, I know that your story is of faith and obedience is going to be inspiring to so many. So God's already using it for his glory. And, and I'm just so thankful for people like you who are willing to do the hard thing, you know, and stand up for the truth and, and for, um, for your faith. And, and it's obviously religious discrimination of, you know, what has happened. Um, so that, you know, you've got a lot of people that are supportive of you and praying for you behind the scenes. Um, and have you found that there are other teachers that have come to you privately in the same spot you were in? Yes. Hundreds. I'm just swamped. I'm, I'm like overwhelmed with the amount of teachers reaching out, um, whether it's for guidance, whether it's to share their similar story, whether it's to tell me that they resigned, a lot of teachers have resigned over these things. And that's really sad too, right? Because they felt defeated in, you know, not being able to live out who they are and what they believe in, in, you know, their career. And so again, it's unfortunate because we don't want to, to see all all teachers like myself gone from the system. Absolutely not. Right. Well, and hopefully this justice will prevail in your case. Um, and you know, if there's, how can someone support you outside of, of being in California near you? What would you, what would you, what would be helpful for you in this? Um, I love just for people to follow along with my story on Instagram. Um, my handle is just underscore say in with three ends, but on there, I have a link in my bio, which does have like my donation page. Um, I actually started a little apparel line. Um, that was really like a 
therapeutic kind of thing that I did after being fired because I put a lot of like quotes and, you know, like Bible verses and song lyrics that really helped me through that whole time of deciding what, you know, if I was going to step out in faith. Um, so there's a link for my little apparel a shop there too. And so really either of those are a blessing. Well, and Bray, we would love to send you books. I know you've got three little ones oh. so we would love to send you some books um, from Brave that you can share with them. And um, just again, you're, you're in our prayers and, and we're here to support you however we can. And we really appreciate the time you've taken today to share your story with us. Thank you. And really, truly right back at you guys. I, I remember seeing brave start up and I was like, that is truly brave. You know, we're watching the world being overtaken specifically children by evil that's just being slipped in right in books in in the classroom and to see you guys step up in such a brave way was really encouraging for me as well so keep doing what you're doing too well thank you again jessica i hope you have a great rest of your day and i appreciate your time thank you you too